Welcome to We Choose to Thrive. This is our interview series with women who have decided to rise above the abuse, no matter what kind of abuse it was, of their past, and to live rich, full lives. We hope you will enjoy our interview series. So welcome to We Choose to Thrive. This is our second book in the series that we're doing. We're doing our bookend video series, and I want to welcome you, Mariana, and tell you how happy I am that you've chosen to join us. And I know that your your sharing will be a valuable contribution to to being able to share with the world your story and make a difference for others. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Becky. Thank you so much for having me and giving me the opportunity to share my story. Uh, it's my pleasure. So can you briefly, Mariana, um, just give us a brief story of your past, kind of what happened for you what's, or what went on to bring you to the being the person you are here today? I was raised in between three countries. Because of it, I was a lot of time very isolated from family members. I was raised in a very kind of pessimistic, negative environment where being the victim was the norm. I was sexually molested by um, a very close family member. Um, I told my one of my parents, and I didn't get the support or, you know, the what I needed. And then I was in a relationship for several years that was very emotionally abusive. There was there was some sexual abuse. I wouldn't say there was a lot of physical abuse that much, but for me personally, because what I had been through as a child. Uh, the psychological abuse was worst mm -hmm. for me. I understand that. And that I see that with a lot of my interviews, and I know I experienced it myself. Sometimes the sexual abuse, while it has its impact, the other kinds of abuses compounded with that can make it even much more worse. Mm -hmm. um, the, the mental abuse, the different things that, that can happen, the physical abuse, all of those kind of play into how we end up handling it and how we process through it, especially when you've had an experience at a young age you yes. know, that, that can just totally change every fiber of who you are. Mm -hmm. So where are you now, Mariana, in your, in your healing journey? Where are you? Um, well, I'm definitely still in the process. I feel now like I am kind of like rediscovering who I really am. I feel like I made the decision to stop living a life that was not what I would have envisioned myself to live and started peeling the layers of trauma and peeling the layers of pain. So I'm kind of like in that river of change right now as to leaving the past behind and healing it and moving over to a new life. So still, still in the process, definitely much better than where I was last year, but... <laughs> Yeah. Well, I know that we've had a lot of conversations and I've watched some of the changes that you've been making and understand the, the ebb and flow of, of working through the changes and uh, realizing that, you know, as human beings, we just don't get through life without something that just rocks our world, you know, yeah. and yeah. it's what we do with it and the, the choices and the decisions that we make to to either stay in, the, in that rear view mirror looking back kind of um, attitude towards life or saying, I'm going to do what it takes to heal. I'm going to do what it takes to get better. Yes, definitely. It's the process and you have to put in the work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. It's, it's sometimes like, I don't want any more of that. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's been the most positive thing that you've done yourself in overcoming this, this trauma from your past? I would say for me was making the decision that there was a problem. And then you have to, after I realized that there was something wrong going on, you know, then just going out and looking for solutions. I found a good therapist. I've uh, done tons of research. I went Google and YouTube to the rescue and started just taking time for myself, meditating so that I could kind of um, identify what some of the issues that I felt were so that I could come in better prepared to my therapy sessions and have an idea of how to move forward. 
kind of begin to study and understand how the mind works and how yes. we react to things too, right? Yes, yes. Uh, tons of research on the subconscious versus the conscious, how, you know, how when we go through big traumas in our lives, sometimes they get stored in your body and they disrupt the flow of things and it becomes a cycle because it, it becomes a habitual pattern. So if we don't, you know, if we don't target that issue and if we don't break that cycle, we, we go into self-sabotage, which I've done several times already. So, you know, it's just keep on learning and just realizing that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And there are tons of people out there that have the information that you need and are willing to, you know, help you. That's right. And, you know, I think that's how we met. We were using, we were discovering the healing codes, um, body code and emotion code through Bradley Nelson, Dr. Bradley mm -hmm. Nelson. And that's how we met. And yeah. it's been an interesting journey as we've worked our way through understanding how to use just the answers that are stored within our, our ourselves, our, within mm -hmm. the code of our body, and understanding how to get to the bottom of that. It's been a pretty fascinating journey, hasn't it? Yes, definitely. And it's, it's, it's like so much information. And at the same time, it's so simple through, through this healing, how you can just identify something, target it, and release it. It's, it's been a tremendous journey. That's what I said. If I were to compare myself now to where I was last year, at this time it's a tremendous, uh, a huge change. Wonderful. I'm really proud of you. You know, uh, because because we can stay stuck and we can stay in that place and have excuses for just about everything. And we both mm -hmm. know that. We both yeah. know that this is the way it can be, but or we can choose and make the decision we're going to move forward and we're going to find every avenue possible for us yeah. to, to continue to, to shine because really we have a responsibility not only to ourselves and to our families, but to our world. You know? mm -hmm. I was doing a study on, I, I was reading some of the works of Dr. David Hawkins and, and he talks about how our emotions are um, can be measured in energy frequencies. It's really fascinating. And yeah. he, he, he talked about emotions like fear and shame and guilt and anger is yeah. rating at about like 20, 30, 40, 50 on this scale, mm -hmm. whereas courage is like at um, 300. Mm -hmm. which is fascinating to me. Yeah. And then as you break through the courage part and come into acceptance and love and those kind of, that it goes up on the scale to 500 and love is where they rate. Um, love, I think. Yeah, like it, right, right at 500. Yeah. So it's pretty interesting because in, they, in their studies, they also found out that when we begin to change and raise our own frequencies, that that we start to impact those around us in yeah. huge ways, even without a word sometimes, but just, mm -hmm. just because we, you know, you, you, when you're walking down the street or you're in grocery shopping and you take the time to even smile at somebody, mm -hmm. that, that in itself can make a big difference. You know, that's such a huge, huge thing. So what words of wisdom would you offer to somebody that's just beginning their own healing journey? Um, I would say to those that you are perfectly and wonderfully made. There is nothing wrong with you. You know, you are worth it. You are enough. We all go through our different things, and there's tons of different traumas. And, but, you know, we as individuals go through them differently, and our experiences are differently, and how we feel about them are differently. So we can never compare ourselves with anybody else because we are, you know, our own being. There's tons of information out there. You are never alone, even though sometimes for us it seems like we are, but we are not. And I think that, you know, there is a, 
a conscious revolution kind of happening right now where people are being more open to share the stuff that they've gone through. And you're starting to realize that a lot of these things seem to be connected. Like you, you spoke about the frequencies and how people around you seem to be affected. And it's because, and, and it's, it goes along with some of the, the studies that I've been doing because it talks about your electromagnetic field. How every person emanates their own electromagnetic field. And that is how when you raise your vibration, people around you sense it. Is mm -hmm. they pick it up. Is for example, when you're staring at a person, you could be staring at a person without realizing that you're staring at them. You're staring at the back of their head. <laughs> and it will take a couple of seconds before they turn around and look straight at you because they know that you were looking at them. That it's all connected. So I feel like if we continue to, you know, share and we continue to explore, learn, and heal we will eventually get to a point where we could start perhaps healing the world. This is a very individual thing, but with this sense of electromagnetic fields and frequencies, then we can see how this could perhaps manifest into something bigger. Because that's where we're all trying to be. We're just trying to be happy. We're trying to live our lives as best as we can with what we got. Mm -hmm. That's right. We, we are. And, and it's so beautiful because the process of growing into the human beings that we want to be in, you know, it's not for the faint of heart because you no. can live, you can live always in sadness or you can say that's enough and, and reach up and make the changes. And we know that many of our listeners have been through drastic things, probably worse than you or I ever dreamed of. And I know that. I've done plenty of these inter We Choose to Thrive interviews of the amazing stories that women tell. And we know men have the same story. We have, we have one out of three women and one out of five men that have gone through some kind of just, just on the sexual assault, not even including all the other things that life can bring our way. Mm -hmm. But it's how we decide to do, what we decide to do about it and how we decide to move on with our lives and, and what we choose to do you know, for ourselves. So if, is there any one or even several different resources that you tapped into that, that I know you've done a lot of research and a lot of studying and you've done a lot of things, but is there something that sticks in your mind that you would love to just recommend to a, somebody else? Yes, we'll definitely become best friends with you too. <laughs> So um, I would recommend a couple authors. Uh, number one would be Dr. Joe Dispenza. He is a neuro, uh, he's a scientist and he's a doctor. I believe he's a chiropractor on the side. And he's very, he has very scientific, you know, methods and proof of why is it so hard for us to change? Um, what happens internally in our brain, in our genetics, um, that makes us act the way that we do. Also, there is Dr. Bruce Lipton. He talks about belief modification, how our subconscious is usually running things, and it keeps on sabotaging us because, you know, we keep on picking things up since we're in the womb. Since mm -hmm. before we're born, we're picking, you know, our mother's emotions. We're picking up our, our father's anxieties and we're being basically programmed with all of these beliefs that might not necessarily be what we would want to have um, so he's very much in the sense of that I also have Greg Braden I have um, Louise Hay mm -hmm. then when when it comes to um, different belief modification systems then there's the the emotion code with the body code. There is EFT that I haven't learned yet, but I want to. Um, that one, I really love the EFT. Um, I want to learn that. I, I've seen a lot of uh, research that keeps on being done on it, so it's very interesting to me. Um, I would also say hypnosis, subliminal messaging, um, which is something that I'm doing as of right now to kind of target specific limiting beliefs that might be sabotaging some of our stuff. 
Um, what else? Uh, I'm pretty sure there's tons of other stuff. There is a, there's tons of films. There is a film that really impacted me called E-Motion. A lot of those doctors are in it too. Um, but they basically just speak about how our emotions get trapped in our, you know, in our body. It can manifest into everything from, you know, self-sabotaging, um, cycles to physical illness. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess, you know, you have to keep an open mind about all of this, but the more research that you do or the more research that I do, the more it makes sense to me. Well, it's a fascinating world that we live in, isn't it? And yes. there's never an end to what we can learn. And it's right there at our fingertips at a time where years ago, this wasn't so easy, easy to access. No. You know, and now we have, with, with the advent of the, the computer, we have YouTube channels and we have a billion different things that we could research, right? Right at our fingertips. And yeah. there is help available. And there's ways to learn how to heal. And many, there's no right or wrong way. There's many different modalities. There's many different things, and we have to find what works for us. And it may be, a, like you just mentioned, all these books, a combination of many things. Many of it, much of it just starts with where, what we decide in our mind and in our hearts yeah. you know, as far as to do that. Yes, yes. I've thoroughly enjoyed this conversation with you today, and I'm so happy that you'll be in our book. And I just say my hat's off to you to, to know that the journey that you've been on and the growth that you've been making. And sometimes it's not easy and it's not fun, but you're doing it. And, and I'm yeah. very proud of you. Thank you so much. Um, you know, it's definitely a process. It is. I do know that as myself, I have to work more on having more patience. <laughs> uh, but it will get better and I am thankful to people like you that seem to have an eye to spot you know some of the things that that people need help with and I'm definitely honored to be offered a spot on your book uh, I'm so happy you are here thank you for watching this we choose to thrive interview if you are currently in an abusive situation please seek help immediately our purpose in creating this book and video series is to form a sisterhood of support. Know that abuse is abuse no matter what kind it is. The stories in this We Choose to Thrive series are as many and varied as the people in it. If this resonates with you, we welcome you and invite you to join us. If you know someone who would benefit from hearing this interview, please feel free to share.